the another class if you have the bible look at um, mark chapter 2 verse 5 to 10 he has the right to forgive sins book of mark chapter 2 mark chapter 2 verse 5 to 10 mark chapter 2 verse 5 to 10 say when jesus saw their faith he has he said to a paralyzed man son your sins are forgiven now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves why does this fellow talk like this like that he is uh, blames, uh blaspheming blaspheming who can forgive sins but god alone immediately jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts and he said to them why you are you thinking these things which is easier to say to this paralyzed man your sins are forgiven or to say get up and take your mat and work but i want you to know that the son of man has authority or not to forgive sins <coughs> which is easier take up your mat and work or forgive your sins which is easier do you understand the question to work and then you know get to your mat is is go is more easy, easy. but only they know that only God is able to forgive your sins. Do you know that Martin Luther he was uh, he was uh, you know priest in the Roman Catholic, but he doesn't know how to overcome the sins. Do you know every human being problem is a sin in their in their life. How can they overcome this sinful nature? There is a even Roman chapter 7, Apostle Paul say, What a wretched man I am! Who can deliver me from this uh, terrible condition? <coughs> what kind of condition? <coughs> One side, simple nature is within there. Another side, is the Holy Spirit within there. It's a big, big conflict, big fighting all the times. But he said, Give thanks to the Lord. My Lord Jesus is able to set me free. Jesus has got the power to forgive sins. Do you understand? Also, we have to forgive one another. When somebody, when somebody upset you and mock you and persecute you, whatever they did to you, and then you know you have to choose the forgiveness. Do you remember Lord's prayer? As we forgive, forgive each other, and then you can forgive our sins. It's very important to forgive one another. Look at the Luke chapter seven, verse forty-eight. Luke chapter seven, verse forty-eight, say. <clears throat> I can read it for you. Luke 7, verse 48. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Can you imagine? Your sins are forgiven. No one say to somebody like this, Your sins are forgiven. Jesus, he has got authority. He has the right to forgive sins. Can you see or not? And say to her, Thy sins are forgiven. Christian, it is that the uh, uh, Pharisees and recognize that Christ was uh, he, here assuming a divine pre, uh, freedom uh, prerogative. prerogative. No more, no mere man uh, had any right to forgive sins. God alone could do that. Hence, the Pharisees' uh, charge of uh, blasphemy. This is no declaration of forgiveness based. Uh, upon the knowledge of a man's patience. Christ does not merely declare the sins forgiven, he actually forgives them. Can you underline Christ does not merely declare the sins forgiven, he actually forgives them. You see, Jesus actually forgives your sins. When you come before the Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus forgive all my sins. He is able to forgive all your sins. And then, and then, and he actually forgive them, uh, forgives them. And put uh, further Jesus in the parable of the two debtors. Luke chapter 7 declares that sins were committed against himself. Psalm 51 verse 4, against the, uh, the, the only have I uh, sinned. Do you know? Anybody know Psalm 51? Who is the author of this song? David. David. When David commits adultery, he asking God for forgiveness. 
That is amazing when God forgives all your sins, you are free. How many have experienced you set free from bondage of sins? Did you experience it? Yeah? Yeah, when your sins are forgiven and then cleansed and purified, you are so blessed. I think that is why in Psalm, I think, Psalm 32, I think. Can you see the Psalm 32, what David say about uh, sins are forgiven? Somebody read it for me, Psalm 32, verse 1 and 2. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, yeah. whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against mm. him, yes. and in whose spirit <coughs> You see? Blessed is the man. Who is the blessed? Is the one? The man. Who's us. Yeah, you and me. Whose uh, transgressions, which is uh, your sins are forgiven. Yeah? You are so blessed. Your sins are forgiven. It's not wonderful. Hallelujah. Huh? Your sins are forgiven. Amen. That is a miracle. And blessed is the one whose sin in the Lord, uh, since the Lord does not count against them. You see? How far between the east and west? Do you think they can meet? No. no. The Bible says your sins are far away at the east to west. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are like a red color and then cleanse your heart and by what? Like, like by the blood of Lord, become like what? White, white Eddie? Snow. The snow. Actually, more white than snow, actually. So pure, so bright now. Because your sins are forgiven. That is why verse 2, Psalm 32, verse 2 say, Blessed is the one whose sin in the Lord does not count against them, in whose spirit is no deceit. You see? Thanks be to God. This, uh, this man is David, a uh, son of David. David, he wrote in this one. And look at uh, the next uh, page. A rising of the bodies of men uh, is ascribed to him. Can you see the next page? Look at the John chapter, John chapter 6, verse 39 and 40. John chapter 6, John chapter 6, verse 39 and 40. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those who has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life. And I will raise them up at the last day. What is the will of God? Verse 39. Anybody knows? I shall not what? I shall lose none of them. This is the will of God. When I think, if you understand uh, John chapter 6, uh, verses 39 and 40, I think you can pray to God, Lord, John chapter 6, verse 39 to 40. This is uh, my scripture. This is uh, my word. This is uh, my will. I know your wills. God doesn't want to lose any of them. Do you know, Jesus promised like this, I shall not lose none of all those who has given me. Yeah? God doesn't want to lose anybody. This is the will of Father in heaven. Yeah? When you come to Lord Jesus, you know, God doesn't want to lose you. Okay. Yeah. And then verse 40 again, for my father's will is that everyone looks to the Son, Jesus, believes in him, who is Jesus, shall have what? Eternal life. This is the will of Father in heaven. What is the will of God for you? Have eternal life. Have everlasting life. And God will raise you up at the last today. And then same chapter, verse 54. John 6, verse 54, Paul say, Whoever eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. What kind of blood? What kind of flesh? What he talking about? You're doing tomorrow, actually, in the service. Holy Communion. Holy Communion. You know, uh, unfortunately, Roman Catholic, they misunderstood the scripture. They believe that the bread is become the real flesh of Jesus. The bread become the real flesh of Jesus. The, the wine become the real blood of Jesus. They made a big, big mistake. You know, the Bible never teach like that. 
It look like the, in the early church, you, do you know what was happening? Early church, when people died, yeah, do you know what they do? When somebody died, and then people, they blame the Christian. Christians like the what? Carnival. Do you know carnival? It's the human being. <laughs> and then, you know, this is happening. But they don't understand the true meaning of Holy Communion. It's a symbolic meaning, actually. We remember what Jesus has done for us. This is the meaning. Can you see the chapter 11, verse 25? John chapter 11, verse 25. <coughs> Somebody read for me, please. He replied, Whether he is a sinner or not. 11.25. John chapter 11.25, yeah. Yeah. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. Thank you. You see, and verse 26. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Yeah. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Yes? Yes. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Yeah. The one who, the one who believes in me will live even through they died. How many believe that you and I live with Jesus forever and ever? Do you believe that? Even we will die physically, yeah? This is not like the total death, no. It's when you died physically, you're going to have another live, which is a eternal life. Isn't that wonderful? Eternal life. This is, this is a blessing. Look, five times it is uh, here declared by the Jesus that is in yes, it is uh, his uh, uh, prayer to be to rise to that. It is a uh, true that other rise to that, but under what or uh, different uh, conditions. They worked by the uh, delegated power. Act chapter nine verse thirty four. Somebody read for me. Act chapter nine verse thirty four. <coughs> You see, <laughs> get up, roll over your mat, immediately, immediately, and then yes, and get up. Isn't that wonderful? You and you and me have the great power, isn't it? Mm. If you have the name of Jesus in you, you can use him, his name of Jesus. But Christ uh, by his own power, yeah. John chapter ten verse seventeen say, I can read for you. John chapter ten verse seventeen. Yeah. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. Jesus said, God, my father loves me because uh, I lay down my life for you guys. I just obey. Yeah. This is uh, 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 not the uh, agony of uh, Elisha and others as you compare with the uh, uh, cleanliness of Christ. None of these claim to rise the dead by his own power, nor to have any such power in the general resurrection of all men. Christ did make such claims. He is to be a judge of all men. How many believe that God will judge, yeah? Yes. He will judge. When he judges, he will judge truly, perfectly. His judge is never a uh, mistake. His judge is a perfect judge. Therefore, John chapter 5, verse 22 say, For the Father judged no man, but had committed all judgment unto Son. You see? Unto Son. Do you believe that 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to this world and not judge the world? He came here to save the world. Save the world. He died on the cross as a Lamb of God. But when Jesus Christ coming again, how will do it? He will? Judge the world, not save the world. You will judge the world. How many are you happy when you have 
second coming of Lord Jesus, yeah? It's a good news, good news. Then uh, if you are innocent, if you are nothing wrong in your heart, if you go to court, you feel blessed, yeah? <laughs> nothing wrong. You know, I talked to the police this morning when the police come and then ask me and uh, some signature. I think Mr. Pili, <laughs> I, he came to me. I shared the testimony, give your life to Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus? He is not. I telling you, come here, you do, you do the statement for you to give your life to Jesus. I, I challenge him, I encourage him. He was laughing. Do, do you understand? Do you know, you and I, you know, came to this, uh, you, and, you and I live in this world and Jesus already came to our life to save us. Therefore, while we still live in this world, uh, preach the gospel, what should we do? Let them receive the salvation, do you know? Let God use you to save the world. Can you say amen? Yeah. Can you say teachers, let God help you to save the world. Say teachers, let God help you to save the world. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, God will help you. Yes. Yes, somebody help him. I think it's a... Yes. Amen. Second Timothy chapter four verse one say in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and dead, and in the view of his appearing and his kingdom, I will give you this charge. Preach the gospel. Preach the word in season and out of season. Yeah? Preach the gospel. Yeah. This is God will judge. Look at the uh, Acts chapter seventeen. Acts chapter 17 and then, then verse 31. Acts chapter 17, verse 31. Can you read it for me? For he has set a day where he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. Yes, he has set a time, set a day when he will judge. He will judge the world with what? Justice. justice, you see. When God will judge the world, he will judge the world with a justice. It's a powerful, powerful. You know, man judge but sometimes a mistake. Have you seen the news in, in China? And the one guy, he get a death sentence. He died by a death sentence in court in China. But do you know what happened? That guy, he stay in the prison yeah, for 10 years and he died. After he died, a few, a few, I don't, a few months, sometime later, the police find out the true murderer. And then that uh, murder of this, uh, this innocent man, he already died. He, I saw the picture. This woman in front of the court, she's screaming like this. Oh, no. You. Chinese government killed my son, innocent my son. You see, therefore human judgment <laughs> not perfect. But Jesus is a perfect judge. Do you know he will bring the what? What the Bible say? Justice. He will judge the world with the justice, perfect justice. He never made a mistake. He will judge the world. And look at the Matthew chapter twenty-five. Brother Benjamin, can you read it for me? Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Yeah, if you find it, can you read it for me, please? Yeah. yeah. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and do the angels with him, he will sit on his heavenly he will sit on his throne in heaven in his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. Yeah. And he will separate the people one yeah. from another. As he separates, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Mm. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Mm. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance. Yeah. The kingdom prepared 
from the first frustration of the world. Yeah. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. Yeah. I was a stranger and you invited me in. To uh, 40. Under 46. 46. Yeah. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? Mm. When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Yeah. Then he would say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Mm. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. Mm. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. Mm. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you mm. did not look after me. They will answer, Lord, when do we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger? or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you. He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Mm. Then he will, sorry, then they will go away to yeah. eternal punishment, mm. the righteous to eternal life. Thank you. You can see the verse 46. Then they will go away to eternal punishment. Where is it? Hell. Hell. And but the righteous to eternal life. Where is it? Heaven. Heaven. He will judge with justice. And if you look at the Matthew 25, verse 45, say, He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Therefore, you and I have a greater chance to serving Jesus. If you're serving your brother, yeah? Serving your brother, you serving whom? Jesus. Jesus. Can you imagine? It's very interesting. When you're doing, you know, what, what, what Jesus is saying, I was a stranger, you did not invite me in. I need the clothes, you did not clothe me. I was ill and uh, in prison, and you did not look after me. You see? If you, that is why prison ministry is a, which ministry? <laughs> Jesus ministry, actually. Jesus, I was in prison. And I was ill, which means hospital ministry is also a uh, ministry of Jesus. And then welfare ministry, if somebody you know, need a cloth, and then tomorrow, I, I just received one phone call. Three years ago, the lady, she Polish lady, she used to come to our church, mm -hmm. and she brought a Muslim man. Muslim man or I, Muslim Muslims? And then she called me, Pastor Paul, now I, I'm the one to look at the homeless, the drug, and all these people. Now one shelter is closed down, and then she want to bring in some ladies tomorrow, <laughs> and the Christian ladies, and yeah, uh, can, you can bring it, <laughs> and then tomorrow I will see to uh, two o'clock, and then then I open my heart to to see, the, who is the one to come to our church, then then you can helping them, you know when I was naked you gave me some cloth, when I was hungry you gave me some food, when I was thirsty you gave me some drink and then do you know therefore you can serve one another when you serve one another Jesus receive the glory and honor and power did you see the, the video today mm. the around six minute video then then that is uh, the mommy and two children is their actor they are they are very good actor they look like dear <laughs> but the, the those who surround them what did they do help. they help them they pay for the bills and they bring the cakes and then it's, it's wonderful. I think it's uh, uh, I think Americans they are mostly I think uh, Christian actually in, in America. Of course it's secular, but uh, it's a thanks be to God. And then uh, in America, uh, especially American Christian, they are willing to give and bless. Uh, last month I received the forty thousand leaflet. Do you know how much is a forty thousand chick leaflet? That one. Including the shipping price and the actual printing price, do you know how much you see? 
40,000 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, leaflet. The price is 12,000 pounds. 12,000 pounds, they spend the money. For what? For winning the soul. And then because of what we put the stick on the back of the leaflet, you know, I listed all kind of, uh, all kind of, uh, you know, the respond. Over 70, 80% of the respond is uh, very good news. <laughs> Which means they attacked me, <laughs> they mock me, they persecute me, and uh, terrible, all kind of you know, strange F word. But what should I do? I, I send a text message, Jesus loves you, <laughs> still God wants to save your soul. Do you know why we put the sticker, our name and uh, my mobile number, do you know why? Guess. They call me, <laughs> and then let me respond to them. Do you know I want to preach the gospel? If somebody reacts like that, it's a good sign, actually. Mm. Do you understand? Most, mostly they throw away in the bin. Yeah. But if they're leading it, and then, then if they don't happy and they respond, they send a text message or whatever, sometimes some people, they send me the letter. Yeah. And then, then some people, they use the magic, big one, and they cross like this and write down the strange word on the, on the leaflet. They send it to us. They, they bought uh, some stamp and then put it inside the envelope and send it to us. Because they saw the, our church address. But what should I do? I continually bless them. Do you know we have to, we have to respond uh, uh, actively in the last day. And then, yeah. Look, okay, the man of the cross is the, to be the man of the throne. And this issue of the judgment are all in his hand. I think you can finish up to now. And um, how many believe that God will judge the world? Yeah? Yes. When God judges the world, it's good for you and good for me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if you, if you know that your judge is a right judge, you'll be happy. Do you think it's, uh, these two women in the Old Testament? Solomon, he is the full of wisdom understanding from God. And the two women claiming, this baby is mine. The other woman said, no, this is mine. Who will be uh, very happy when they come to the King Solomon? Among the two women. The mother. True mother is happy. The, the fake mother, she was nervous. She was uh, scary. And then Dina, King Solomon is uh, like the, of course, he get the wisdom from God. He's a powerful judge. But I tell you, you cannot compare to Solomon and then our Savior Jesus. And Solomon is uh, full of wisdom. Do you know what he say? I have a good idea. I can judge now. Bring the sword. Bring the sword. When I bring the sword, I will cut this baby half. And half one for this woman, half for another woman. What the uh, fake woman say there? Cut, cut. Please cut, good idea. <laughs> what the real woman say, real mother? Give her the baby, don't it's okay, don't cut, give it to her. And King Solomon say, no, this, is a, this woman is a true mother. That woman is a fake. And then that fake woman go to the prison. You see, you can see there's some, some, some parable, how God will judge. Therefore, when we see the judgment today, are you scared or you are so happy? Judgment today. Happy. Why? That woman, that true woman, she's so exciting day. Why? It's, you know, she can get the uh, uh, judgment uh, with the justice because the King Solomon is a right judge on that day. But I'm telling you, on the last day, Jesus is a right judge. We we'll judge whole world with justice. Therefore, for you and me, on the last day, no scaring day. <laughs> but non-Christian is what? Scaring. scaring and terrifying and then it's, it's, it's terrible day. But for you and me, glorious day. That is why you call the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, come, come Lord. Maranatha. Come Lord Jesus, quickly. Come, Lord Jesus. We can ask in God. Because God will judge. He will judge with justice. Therefore, 
You know, for me, when I saw the policeman today, this morning, I'm so happy to give the, the signature for my statement. Why? Because I want to see the, the justice will be done in that case. Do you understand? You saw the, my case about Brixton prison case. I'm so happy to go to court. Why? Because justice will be done. That is, I'm happy. But the other party, wha what the, how they feel? Scared. Scared. <laughs> They're scared. Then I received the I received the letter from from the court. My case uh, delayed for four months, and then sometimes uh, in the June, uh, not July, tenth of July. Keep on praying for that, and then I'm happy. I'm happy when I go to the court to get uh, s some uh, judgment with the justice. Do you understand? But unfortunately in this world, uh, we don't see the, some justice <laughs> many, many times. But we're telling the truth. Have you seen the, the video? Pastor John uh, Seawood, the pastor of a pilgrim church in the, uh, in the where? Oxbridge in North London. Mm -hmm. And he was preaching. And then because he's telling the truth. God made male and female. What's wrong with that? But somebody, you know, not very happy with uh, this uh, creation. Somebody not very happy about, uh, you know, the um, proper marriage. Man married with a woman. Woman married with a man. This is a proper marriage. No man married with a man. No, we're telling the truth. But LGBTQ, they are not very happy. Do you understand? But we saw that, you know, Injustice, you know. This uh, police, uh, three police, uh, you know, you know, bound him and then you know, arrest him by handcuff and back like this. He's old man, over seventy years old man. Can you imagine? But that is why many people they against uh, this kind of uh, you know behavior of a police. But I pray for police. I pray for judge and solicitor and the law lawyers. They need to know. You have to bring the right judgment with the justice Jesus he will come again to judge the world with the justice therefore I love it I love this right to judge Jesus will come back quickly soon and so happy how about you you're happy for Jesus coming yeah yes. yeah if you don't repent your sins if you don't accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior yeah, if you don't recognize that Jesus, your Lord and your Savior, you are scary. When Jesus Christ come back, He'll judge the world. For us, we will receive the reward. Yeah, on the judgment day, we will receive the great reward. It's not wonderful. <laughs> For non-Christian, terrible, eternal punishment. Can you stand there? And you can pray together, Lord. Jesus, you are a right judge. He came to this world and the Savior of the world, but he will come again with the judge the world with the justice. Therefore, we waiting, we wait upon the Lord. We longing to see him. Shall we pray together? Just one minute we can pray together. Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. Lord, we thank you for you are coming back soon. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. We wait upon the Lord. Father God, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We know that Jesus came to this world uh, 2,000 years ago as the Savior of the world. He came to this world to save the sinners, save the souls. But he will come again as you judge, judge the world, no more Savior. He is a judge the world. He came to this world uh, 2,000 years ago as the Lamb of God. But when you come again, you are a Lion of Judah. He will judge the world with justice. Father, we wait. We are longing to see you. We can meet with you in air. Father, we love you. Bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you give the cloud for the Lord Jesus? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you for watching. God bless you.